All right, so today we're talking about air separators. Uh, this here is a Taiko 4900 series air separator. Um, the main reason you need one is in the name itself. It separates the air from the water. Um, so when you first fill a system with water, you're going to have a lot of the piping holding air within the entire system. These circulators, they cannot move air. They simply move water. So when you first go to fire up your system, you may feel even some, depending on how your system is designed and your piping configuration, you may have an issue with um, you're feeling the heat on this side, which is the feed side of the pump the, from the boiler, yet you touch this pipe and it's pretty much cold. What's happening there is this, this pump is airlocked. Um, so an air separator is not going to remove the air on the initial startup phase. Um, so what you'll need to do to get around all that is by either purging the system um, or letting the boiler itself go through its air purge mode on initial startup. Um, however, once you do remove the, you know, the majority of air from the system, typically by purging it, which means pushing in water with a higher pressure, opening up some valves on um, the piping and allowing that water pressure to remove and push all those air pockets out. Um, but even with that said, there's still going to be um, a small amount of air just trapped in different fittings, maybe some elbows, um, within pumps. Um, there's going to be a lot of areas that air can, can be trapped. So over time when the system's running, it's going to be heating up, cooling down, expanding, contracting, and that air is going to work itself through the system. Eventually it is going to um, make its way throughout all of the piping in back through the boiler and out so at some point you want to be able to grab onto all those um, bubbles and be able to scrub them out of the system and that's exactly what the air separator does so um, what's inside of this air separator is actually some media some metal bits if you will so when this is disconnected and you just have this you can actually look right in there it's just a screen mesh and you can see the media that's sitting in there and it's just meant to be very erratic and misshapen and the, the purpose of it is so when the water is flowing through there it hits all that media and tries to flow in all different directions and essentially what it's doing is just grabbing onto all of those small micro bubbles and allowing it to get trapped and rise up. Um, that will then lift up the float that's in here internally and leak it all out. So on initial startup, you may actually hear some air hissing out of here. Over time, um, at random points, you may also hear, not over a long period of time after the system's running, but after the first uh, few hours or the first few days, when those bubbles become trapped in the, within this, it's gonna open up again and purge some of that air out. So. Um, the main reason you need it is because not only do these pumps not move air, but even little bits of air um, that have oxygen trapped in there can cause corrosion long term. Um, you could also damage pumps again, even if an air bubble flies through there. One is not going to hurt it, but over time, generally you do not want that sort of thing. Um, if there's air trapped in, you could just all of a sudden randomly have no flow through one of your zones. Um, or you could just have uneven flow throughout your zones. Maybe, you know, sometimes you are getting heat out of your radiators or baseboards or radiant, if you will. Um, and then sometimes all of a sudden that air bubble breaks loose and now you're getting heating back there again. So, um, again, this is not meant to remove the initial amount of air that's trapped in the system. But over time, it's going to work out all of those micro bubbles. Now you may have also seen a similar looking device that's actually referred to as an air scoop. Those work on the principle of the air which is naturally going to float at the top of the water and that relies on that bubble that's flowing through to actually be scooped which is why it's called an air scoop. It'll, it'll get scooped up into a trap which will then work in a similar fashion and be bled out the top. Um, the, the issue with those is again that it's relying on that air bubble to be trapped up top and when you have very turbulent water coming out of a circulator out of the boiler um, and these various bends and whatnot if it's not installed absolutely correctly to the manufacturers recommendation it will simply not remove air um, what that means is that typically those air scoops require a specific amount of 
piping before that device because the air has to have time after it's been shaken up and moved around violently to be able to settle and rise back up in the top of the pipe to be scooped out. Um, so I have had people comment that, hey, your, your air scoop, if you will, is not uh, installed correctly. Well, it is because these actually do not matter where they are located because, as I said before, all of the water is being the purpose of that water and that media that's in there is to violently shake it up more to scrub all the bubbles out of it. So you can mount this thing um, in any position. You can have an elbow right before it, you can have an elbow right after it as you see here, and it will function correctly. You can read the manual and not just take my word for it. It can be installed in any configuration and still do its job. It also does not need to be at the highest point in the system. As you can see here, we have the boiler up top. We do have an air bleeder up there. However, our main air scrubber or air separator is certainly not at the highest point because like we said, it does not work on the principle that we're worried about air being able to rise up or be scooped out. Um, the other thing worth mentioning about air separators is the relative location to where it is actually within the system. So you want this thing to be able be in the position of the highest temperatures because that is where your air is going to be expanding the most and working its way naturally want to escape from that water. So we have this directly after our primary manifold within this boiler system and that's always where they're placed. Um, let me just back up a little bit and you can see that the hot feed from the boiler comes down and is returned back in the boiler and as the secondary loop comes this way and mixes it's pulling this this hot water from the boiler and it's going to be pulled directly through this air separator first thing um, you'll also notice that the expansion tank is off of this air separator and in a separate video I'm going to talk about expansion tanks and their function and position within the boiler system too and, and, and you'll later realize why we also position that in there. Um, so I think that covers pretty much the major points of uh, air separators in general, what they're for, where you put them. Um, if you do have any further questions about them or maybe even you noticed on your existing system that's not where it's placed or that's not the style you have, um, comment below or reach out to me, email me. And we could discuss, you know, options of either getting that corrected or maybe I'll also be able to explain to you why your system is okay the way it is. Um, not every system is the same. Everything needs to be taken into account um, when you are designing a system. So reach out to me if you got any questions. Um, give this one a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, let me know if you want me to design you a system or uh, consult you on your own build. And uh, with that said, we'll see you guys in the next one.